Welcome to an example on how to solve a second order non-homogeneous Cauchy-Euler equation. A second order non-homogeneous Cauchy-Euler equation must fit this form here, where we started to recognize that this is a second order differential equation and it would be non-homogeneous as long as g of x is not equal to zero. But what makes this a Cauchy-Euler equation is that for every term on the left side, the degree of the coefficient is equal to the order of the derivative. For example, looking at this first term, ax squared has degree two, and the term also has y double prime, or the second derivative. Notice how the next term has a coefficient of bx, so the degree is one, the term also contains the first derivative, and then finally the third term, we have a constant times the function y. So once we know our differential equation fits this form, to find the general solution, there will be two major steps. The first step will be to find the complementary function, which we can do, which we can do by finding the solutions to this auxiliary equation, where the values of a, b, and c come from the differential equation, and then based upon the types of solutions to this quadratic, it will affect the form of the complementary function as we see here. So once we find the complementary function, we'll then find a particular solution, big Y sub p, using the variation of parameters method, which is outlined here. One of the most important things to remember about this method is that before applying it, the coefficient of y double prime must be one. Let's take a look at our example. Our first step is to recognize that the given differential equation does fit this form here, and therefore we do have a second order non-homogeneous Cauchy-Euler equation. Now for the next step, we'll find the complementary function of the general solution by setting up this auxiliary equation. So we need to notice that a is equal to one, b is equal to negative two, and c is equal to positive two. So the auxiliary equation would be m times the quantity m minus one, and then since b is negative two, would have minus two m C is positive two, and now we'll solve. Let's first clear the parentheses and then combine like terms. So we'll have m squared minus one m minus two m, that's minus three m plus two equals zero. We can solve this by factoring. The factors of positive two that add to negative three are negative two and negative one. So we have m equals positive two or m equals positive one. So because the auxiliary equation has two distinct real zeros or real roots, the form of the complementary function will be in this form here. Remember, if we had two real equal roots, this would be the form of the complementary function. And if our auxiliary equation had complex roots, this would be the form of the complementary function. So we now know that y sub c is equal to c sub one x squared plus c sub two x. This also tells us for the variation of parameters method, y sub one is equal to x squared and y sub two is equal to x. And now before we find big y sub p, our particular solution, Let's review the method of variation of parameters. As mentioned earlier, the most important thing to remember is the coefficient of y double prime must be one. Once it's in this form, the right side of the equation will be g of x. So we already found y sub one and y sub two. And once we identify g of x and find the Wronskian of y sub one and y sub two, we'll simply apply this formula here for the variation of parameters formula. And this will give us big y sub p. So going back to our example, let's begin by dividing everything by x squared. So our differential equation would be y double prime. This would be minus two divided by x times y prime. This would be plus two divided by x squared y equals, this would be two x e to the x. So we know that y sub one was equal to x squared, y sub two is equal to x, 
And now we also know that g of x is equal to 2x e to the x. So the next step, let's go ahead and find the Ronskine of y sub 1 and y sub 2. We'd have a 2 by 2 determinant where the first row would be y sub 1 and y sub 2 and the second row would be the derivatives, so 2x and 1. So the Ronskine is going to be equal to x squared minus 2x squared or negative x squared. So the Ronskine is equal to negative x squared. Now we have all the information we need. We'll simply perform substitution for big Y sub p. Let's do this on the next slide. So we'll have big Y sub p equals negative Y sub 1. That's going to be negative x squared times the integral of Y sub 2 times G of x. That'll be x times 2x e to the x, that's 2x squared e to the x, divided by the Ronskin, which is negative x squared dx, and then plus y sub 2, or plus x, times the integral of y sub 1 times g of x, that'll be x squared times 2x e to the x, that's 2x cubed e to the x, divided by the Ronskin dx. Now let's simplify the integrands. Let's factor out the two, and also notice that we have two negatives here, so it'll be 2x squared times the integral of, here we have x squared over x squared, that simplifies to one. So we just have e to the x dx. And here we have a negative, it's gonna be minus, we'll factor out the two, and then two factors of x will simplify out so we have x e to the x dx. Notice how to integrate this, we'll have to apply integration by parts, which means the integral of u dv is equal to u v minus the integral of v du. So for this integral, we'll let u equal x, so differential u is equal to dx, so if u is equal to x, then dv must be equal to e to the x dx. So if we integrate this, we'd have v equals e to the x. So now we have big Y sub p equals 2x squared times the integral of e to the x, which is just e to the x. So we have 2x squared e to the x minus 2x times this integral. When we apply integration by parts would be u times v, or x e to the x, minus the integral of v du, which would just be e to the x dx. So now we have 2x squared e to the x minus 2x squared e to the x. Since the integral of e to the x is just e to the x, we'll have negative 2x times negative e to the x, so we have plus 2x e to the x. And notice how these two terms simplify to zero. So finally, the particular solution is just 2x e to the x. So now that we have our particular solution, and we just found the complementary function here, the sum of these two functions will be our general solution. So again, the general solution is equal to the complementary function plus the particular solution, or in our case, y of x is equal to c sub one x squared plus c sub two x plus big Y sub p, which was two x e to the x. This would be our general solution. I hope you found this helpful.